Hey, it's Faith Talk Live. I'm Rick Probst. And I'm Dan Ratcliffe. What a pleasure to talk to this young man. It's uh, Pastor Matthew Barnett. I saw his dad many years ago back in the 90s in Phoenix, just crushing it and outreach with the buses and just shaking the planet. And then I think it was, Matt, somewhere around the mid-90s, I saw a special on television, and you opened up the Dream Center right there outside of Hollywood, right? Yeah, right on the Hollywood freeway. I actually see the Hollywood sign right now outside my, my door here. It's pretty oh, exciting. Cool. So that's been, what, probably about 14, 15, maybe 16 years ago, something like that? You're not going to believe it. I've been here for 25 years Whoa. now. Oh, yeah. 20. My 25 goodness. years I've been in the same spot here in uh, the middle of Los Angeles in a very difficult spot, but it's been so rewarding to see what's happened. So you well, started we... when you were three years old then, is what you're saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, we like aged recently, but yeah. <laughs> well, you are in the midst of it. You guys have been locked down for uh, well around 30-some days. Uh, as I mentioned before, we were on live here on Zoom and on the radio. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what's going on. So you had mentioned that because the school system, they're out here as well, but you guys have been out for some time. I guess the rest of the year, the school system's out. You're picking up uh, this, the slack and feeding so far, what, over 200 and some thousand uh, folks, right? Yeah, we're at 270,000 hot meals over the course of 30 straight days of operating seven days a week, 11 hours a day. We have a wow. drive through that's always open for 11 hours every day for seven days a week. And in, as a result, 260, uh, 270,000 people being fed. And then of course, the deliveries into the seniors who need food as well. I've, I've just never seen anything like it. It's getting scary because every day it's getting more and more as, as the lockdown continues to extend, people are losing more jobs. And it, there's just sadly a horrible virus. But then of course, underneath that, is another virus of people losing their jobs and employment and families just lost it all. It's just, it's heartbreaking. And this little drive through lines become a one minute little counseling session or uplifting place in people's lives. Now, uh, before we started, Matthew, you were t telling us about how you have some of the LA Dodgers players that are helping you guys out. Tell us the story uh, about what they're doing. Well, the Dodgers have always been great friends of ours over the years. For example, Justin Turner, he'll even, uh, the Dodgers third baseman, um, he'll come after baseball games and sit with our guys in rehab program and just talk and play games with them at night. I mean, wow. he's that kind of guy. Uh, but they started employing businesses all around Dodger Stadium that were struggling to survive. And so they started paying for their food in bulk, massive quantity, full price, so that these businesses can stay open and so that we can get free food. So jobs are being saved. Some of the best food all around, I mean, the Dodger Stadium area is being delivered right here to the Dream Center and we're serving it on the front lines and hundreds of thousands of dollars the Dodgers have been given. Max Muncy the other day, Cody Bellinger, Corey Seager now, they've stepped up as well picking up certain meals of the week. And it's just, you know, I think when you stand in one place for so long, for 25 years, and you don't leave the neighborhood. Um, people know that we have a tremendous love and a, and a passion for God and our faith is so strong. But I think it transcends that. There's something about longevity that wins the hearts of people, knowing that you're not going to give up on people. And then when the, when the stakes get a little bit tougher, then you step up even more. That becomes kind of your reputation of serving. We're talking with Pastor Matt Barnett. Uh, he co-founded the Dream Center in Hollywood. Now there's about 150 around the globe. I don't remember how many years ago, Matt, but I read a book that you put out, and it talked about you're supposed to celebrate an anniversary for the Dream Center, and you ended up spending the night or two nights or three nights on Skid Row. I was so moved by that book. It was amazing. You shouldn't have been there. I mean, you should have been partying like there. It's 1999. <laughs> but you were out there in Skid Row, and actually your life was in danger because you, wouldn't, you, you didn't take anybody with you. You went by yourself. Is, and I know we've got two different things here, COVID-19 and Skid Row. Right. Did that prepare you at all for this, or are they total, are two totally different animals? Oh, that's a great question. It did. I look back on that experience of spending um, a few days on Skid Row homeless, and every that felt like the longest year of my life. I mean, the long, those couple of days felt like forever, because every second of the day, I'm looking over my shoulder. There's danger. There's violence. There's thousands of people, of course, in just a few block radius of living homeless. And it was there where I saw women and children and families that were homeless. And I called the Dream Center from that experience and said, we need to open up a whole wing of the building for homeless families. Hmm. 
because of that experience, now we house 250 people that are families that are homeless who have nowhere to go to help them rebuild their lives. Every, every time I've needed vision in my life, I don't necessarily go to like a church conference, although I get much inspiration from those type of things. I just walk amongst the city and the need of the city, it has all the vision that you'll ever need just by walking around the valley and seeing what's going on. And, and uh, that changed my life. I think it prepared me. I've done all kinds of crazy things. I've run seven marathons on seven continents in seven consecutive days, even though I'm not a marathon runner, hmm. you know, to keep the Dream Center alive during a time where I literally had to empty my whole bank account to keep us alive and then had to do this crazy fundraiser across the world. But, you know, when you're in it, you go through 25 years, you go through a lot of ups and downs and hard times, and especially in a city like this where everything's expensive, it's hard for people to survive. But, you know, God always gives you the ability to find a way to do things that you're not really capable of doing. And I think that's what the whole book is about, is taking steps that are unfamiliar and not being afraid to respond to those little things that don't make sense, that are outside your comfort zone. And when you do, you begin to find a whole different kind of life that comes through faith and not living in fear. Mm. Matt, because we're on opposite sides uh, of the nation here, uh, not everybody in Atlanta knows what's going on in LA. Tell us uh, why the Dream Center exists. About, I mean, obviously there's homelessness there, but tell us why they exist and, and how did that get put on your heart to, to do this? Yeah, we have 700 residents that live in our building and the ministry started though, it, my dad couldn't find a pastor. I was 20 years of age. And uh, he got a little building in the inner city, that the assemblies that God gave him and said, look, we don't want this building to like, to leave, you know, we want to keep it. We don't want it to be sold to the banks, but nobody wants to build here. It's after the earthquakes and the riots and the neighborhood was in the middle of drive-by shootings and violence, mm -hmm. horrible season for that church. And the pastor was 80, he was awesome. He hung on to that building as long as he could. And my dad couldn't find a pastor. He invited 10 guys, um, you know, cause he couldn't pastor from Phoenix, but he needed someone to pastor. All of them turned it down. And he said, son, can you help me for three months until I find someone? Can you just like literally manage for three months? I have nobody who wants this job. So I came here for three months expecting to go back to Bible school and be <laughs> on with my future. And I've been here for 25 years now. Wow. And it started, my first ministry was moving the desk on the sidewalk. I had my phone, three bags of food, and I just talked to all the mamas of the neighborhood as they walked on by. That's where it started. And now, 25 years later, I found myself right back on the parking lot. I still got my gloves on, just down there, hmm. um, doing the same thing I did 25 years ago, just telling people don't give up hope and just trying to be a pastor that's standing on the wall of the city saying, look, there's still hope and having a positive voice. And it, it's, been, it's been wild. And to be honest with you, there, there's been five or six times I literally quit. I went, uh, drove my car. I was driving back to Arizona. And uh, there's a little Dairy Queen on the side of the road about an hour outside the city. I'd, I'd always stop there to get a Dairy Queen blizzard, and then I would just eat it. And then as I would eat it, the Lord would speak to me and say, just give me one more day. Go back to L.A. Hmm. So God and Dairy Queen literally saved my ministry <laughs> for the last 25 years. It's those awesome. blizzards. They'll do it every time, man. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> Pastor Matthew Barnett, uh, we got to go to a break here in just a few, but we do want to touch on your new book. It's called One Small Step, and you kind of set it up there because you did. You started the Dream Center, One Small Step. What's the, what's the book about and, and why now? Yeah, it's about not necessarily doing big things like the Dream Center, but just following the nudges of the Holy Spirit, those things in your life that you, we always rationalize why we can't do them. And it's just learning to say yes. And what happens in life to when you send that text message to forgive that somebody that you've had a grudge against your whole life. It's when you, you know, do things that, you know, that the things that we usually try to justify why we can't are the things that usually propel our life to go forward and live a different type of life. And that's why I wrote the book to get people to say yes to more of those things in their heart that they typically rationalize away mm -hmm. on a daily basis. You're amazing, uh, Pastor Matt. We appreciate you and your amazing team because you have to have one, right? The logistics must be, you must be pulling your hair out at times with the logistic on all those dream centers. But thank you for answering the call and uh, sticking to it. And thanks for the new book. It's called One Small Step. You can check it out, no doubt, uh, Amazon and, of course, his website there. We've got to go to a break. Uh, we'll be right back. I'm Rick Probst. And I'm Dan Ratcliffe. This is Faith Talk Live. Stay there. Stay there.